Just to be clear, the aim here is to provide you with a recipe to create this material effect that looks a bit like velvet, but not to get too bogged down in how it works. So what I'm going to do is bring in a model, um, one of these Stanford Dragons, this XY RGB Dragon. I think uh, Graham Dretch converted from this for me from the Stanford Scanning Repository models uh, using MeshLab. So I've just got my dragon in, in default grey and I'm just going to layer him to the floor because he's floating a bit. And if you have a look at the setup here, I've got my camera and I call this facing north looking at the dragon. Now the orientation of this scene is going to be critical because of the way the material works. But we'll set up the material first and then move on to that consideration. So here's my dragon. I'm going into the material lab and first of all I'm going to choose a colour for this. So I'm going to give it uh, a blue colour. So give it a blue velvety effect. The only other control I'm going to use is bump height. So if I pop a blob in bump height and I'm going to hold the shift key down and go into the material library and I'm going to use this uh, selection here basic and blue check. Now the reason for selecting this is because I know in the texture source editor that I don't have any phase in the final combination and there's no filter in the final combination and likewise in the first component, the only component being used, there is also no phase and no filter. And That's important because the setting of this uh, property for the component is critical. We only need an output on the bump channel, so just have the bump selected there, don't worry about the settings on the other channels. And then with this component selected, go into the noise for this, and instead of square, you want to select distance squared. It the mode wants to be minimum and the octaves 1. I'm not going to worry about this direction too much, but I will just set it to 0. So if I hold the, uh, I think it's the Alt key, and click on one of the number, the 0 number, it'll make the other number the same. It wants to be set 3D, that's good, and the frequency setting is critical, it wants to be minus 1. It can be a bit fiddly to get that right with that control, I'm just uh, clicking and holding down the control. So this is the settings you want, distance squared, minimum, 1 octave, 3D, frequency of minus 1, throughout X, Y and Z. Now this has a special property, I won't go into any great depth about this, but it's in a very extreme range. and you can make this both positive and negative for different effects and have the output on the alpha as well but you may experiment with that yourself at the moment Horo and I are looking into that and there's a lot of things that can be done with it but this is just the velvet effect so we just want bump so if you check out of the lab now this is all set up you'll notice the preview looks a bit odd and I think that's because it's so far out of range there's no possible interpretation for what you've got here uh, this is the uh, the height map it's generating the bump with. And we're also going to pump the push the bump height really high. So Hurry showed me you can enter more than 999. You can actually go 9999999999 and that will give you 9999.99 which is a very extreme bump driven by an extreme bump. This wants to be parametric and so now if you look at our sphere it's completely dark. Now when you've got geometry you get the normals off the geometry and that determines where the faces are pointing and if they're pointing towards a light source the face gets lit. When you provide bump information it modifies the interpretation of the normals and gives the illusion of geometry. But if you pump the bump so far around you can get a situation where it can turn the face entirely away so you're flipping the normals over and I've covered this in a few videos regarding reflection correction and I believe that's what's happening here. So let's just have a look what we've got okay and I'll give that a quick render so this is sort of getting the effect now but the thing is that this effect is also determined by the orientation of our object in the scene and for the velvety effect it seems to work best so far as I can tell if we turn our dragon around 90 degrees here and I'll take my camera and I'll move that around 90 degrees so I've got my camera and I'll da narrow the field of view and then it'll be just a matter of adjusting the light source so it looks about right. So that, that's looking pretty close to what I'm after. I might turn the dragon a bit actually. And uh, I don't think I need any haze so just hold the old key down, click on the haze control there and that'll just switch the haze off. So we've uh, cleaned things up a bit and then it's just a matter of adjusting the light source. Now bear in mind because I'm now pointing that way, so if imagine this is north and south, to for the sun to be on my right I'd have to move it up here. 
so that's just the uh, the consideration there for moving the light source and then adjust it till the effect looks about right if it's looking a bit dark which i think it is there then you can always go into the skylab and increase the output and you can preview it here using rendering scene so as you can see it's a fairly easy effect to set up and it only uses a diffuse channel so it's very efficient to render uh, but actually the way it's operating is, is is quite complex and so I didn't want to go too deeply into that so there you go I hope that's been interesting you'll have a go at using this and if you're feeling adventurous experimenting with that function in other channels to see what else you can get it to do